Hey there, DW Berman here, back again with another video, this time in Lightwave, and I saw a request somewhere on the internet uh, asking about controlling multiple parameters using an all, like controlling light intensity using an all, controlling uh, object opacity, yep, several things at one time using an all, and there are several ways to set up a relationship like this in, re in Lightwave. And I think I've done a video on this before, but I couldn't quite find it, so I'm going to do, do a new one. What I have over here in this scene is I have a, a null. It's called Control Null. And uh, it's right now no, does nothing. Slide it up and down, nothing. Um, set that back to zero. I have a light, which I'll control the intensity of. I have a sphere here and a box with an object on it. And I'm going to control these things using just this null. There, like I said, there are several ways of doing this. Uh, first of all, let me click on the light and we'll tackle the light uh, intensity. So light properties and light intensity. I'm going to click it. it you, it'll probably look like this on yours. It might even be 100%, but click on the E. If it's an E, you can edit the envelope and the envelope is edited in the graph editor and here's the graph editor. And this might be scary for a lot of people, but the easiest way to add that kind of relationship is uh, by going over here to the add modifier and come down to the channel follower and we double click the channel follower and we select the channel we want to follow so let's go find our control null object and we want to control it using the Y position so let's click on the Y position and here we have a time lag and a scale and start frame and end frame and the way this is set up it means it always works I guess so okay and there we go that relationship is set up now one thing I will point out is using the channel follower it's a modifier it modifies the curve so whatever you have set here notice our intensity is already set to 75 when I move this this is going to modify that setting you see it's like blowing way out and if I bring this up to one meter, which is 100% in this case, uh, it's completely blown out and way over white. But if I bring this back down to zero, it's still pretty well lit. That's because our initial value here is set to 75. This is our first keyframe on our light. And in Lightwave, everything that is animatable has to have a keyframe. In this case we added the light intensity to the graph editor so we could animate it and now it has a first keyframe. So if I set this value on that light intensity to zero, now I drag this up you can see hey look it's brightening up and incidentally lights can go into negative as well so you can suck some light out of the scene if you need to. Um, I generally don't do that but it's an option if you want to. I will also point out there's another way to do this. So let's uh, clear this light intensity. There, are, Like I said, there are several ways of doing this. Let me change the light intensity back to 75% to prove a point. Okay, I clicked on the E again. That opened up our graph editor again. And let's scroll down here in this little channels box and we'll bring up the control null position Y again. We'll drop that, drag and drop that up into this channel menu here. Now if I click on the expressions tab, this is what scares people I think. Um, this is just a way of setting up relationships. Expressions are a way to set up relationships between things. Let me change my viewport here. So it's, oh, there we go. Just trying to get a little more screen real estate. Anyway, um, this isn't really math, it's just setting up relationships between things. Right now, I have this, let me clear this expression. I've already made this one. Sorry. Okay. I have, let's, let's, let's make this light follow expression, I guess. That's a terrible name, but there we go, light follow. Um, remember, I dragged the position from this channels box down here to the channel box up here. Now with it up there I can right click on it and 
after I cleared out the value, I can hit append to expression. Basically, what this is saying is this expression is telling whatever I apply this expression to to follow this value, to follow this channel directly. So now if I come up here to the light intensity and I click apply, you see the light goes completely out. It's not, I haven't changed my keyframe here, it's still at 75%, but it completely overwrites the modifier, so or it completely overwrites the, the previous setting. So there we go, it fades up and down. And we can also alter this a little bit by saying multiply it by 0.5, so that way it's uh, you know half the value. So if I bring the null up to 2 meters, then it's, the light is at 100%. Otherwise, it's at 50% when it's down at, when the null is at 1. OK, so yeah, that's a, a, a lot of mess. I'll also point out there's a uh, booster link here. This works with IK Boost. And it's useful for more things than just IK, you know, and animation. Um, Ryan Roy, if that's, has a great tutorial on how to use that to set up lights, and you can adjust the colors and stuff too. Um, I'm not going into that right now. Okay, so that's the light. How do I control the light? Or how do I control the surface of this? Let me turn that off half resolution. How do I control the surface on this? box. Okay, well let's go to the surface editor. Well, let's just shift click on it on the texture. That opens up our surface editor. You'll see we have a T button for the texture. That means that's where I have the uh, the image applied. And here's my image. On the next to the layer opacity, we have an E. So I can click on the E. It's just like the uh, light intensity E. That brings us back to the craft editor. I can again add a channel modifier or channel follower to this and see if what we can do with this. Now that certainly brightened it up, which I don't necessarily want to do, so let's just set this back down to zero. So now I can fade out the texture when I fade out the light, supposedly. Maybe that didn't work. Oh, that's because I set it on the wrong thing. Hmm. I need the control null position Y, not the light position Y. It helps when you control the correct thing. And uh, just for kicks, we'll do the sphere as well. Just uh, properties. Do, do, do render. We'll do object dissolve this time. Hey, it's another E button. It brings us back to the graph editor. How about that? So let's uh, again add a modifier channel follower. And let's see, new sphere object, no. I'll make sure I pick the right object this time. And there we go, it's completely out. That's because object dissolve is like the opposite of opacity. Although it's still not working, so I don't know what's going on with all that. You can see the dotted line moving, so let's see. Hey, this is just, yeah, there we go. You see the light fading it out. What if you want it to go the opposite direction? Let's see what happens if we do the scale of negative 100, see if that fades it out as I lower the intensity. Eh. Kinda. Kinda works. Not entirely. I have to go to negative one to get it out. So, but there's also uh, an offset, I believe. Nope, there isn't. Okay. Well, this is something that we might need to do a little more work on. Let's see if we can do this with an expression easily. Remove. Um, or, I'll show you something else. There's also a textured channel down there. You can't really see it. It's off your screen, textured channel. I can add a procedural and change the procedural to node editor. There's node editor. 
edit nodes okay now I'm in a node editor from the graph editor or from a texture channel channel texture thing in the graph editor okay let's grab uh, item info and let's double click on that pick my item I want the item to be control null okay and let's see um, let's go to vector scalar that'll split out my vector I think position is what I want and Y channel so my Y position and now you see it's again fading out when it goes up it's not completely away of course that might some of that might be the uh, specularity but now that it's in this format we can control this in other ways Let's see what invert does now I fade it out fade it in so like I said there's a lot you can do with this you can remap this with gradients so that it fades in and out differently so this uh, little node editor tree will work in textures as well so if I again click on this I could just add it in or I could just use uh, it in the node editor here to fade that texture in and out um, of course I'd have to have the texture in a node in here but that's a quick kind of quick overview of a few different ways of controlling multiple or controlling one object by animating a different object and there are like it like I said other ways of setting these things up uh, but the uh, E button is your friend for connecting channels from one object to another thanks I hope you learned from this video and I hope you have a great day oh and by the way subscribe to this channel cuz uh, that helps me stay motivated to keep making these videos and also check out liberty3d.com where I have full-length videos uh, for sale for tutorials uh, for Lightwave that uh, yeah, are perhaps a little better thought out and edited down so thanks for watching and again have a great day